Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a snowman booty using your standard 24 peg 5 8 inch gauge loom. And um, even though your loom may not look like mine, this is the standard one you can get out of any general store. Okay, so what your thing is going to look like, it's going to look a little like this. Okay. Little top hat. Okay. And there's going to be room to kind of make alterations yourself. This is a lot like making a sock. And if there's a particular technique that you like making a sock, it's going to be entirely up to you. I'm using Burnett Blanket Yarn. I have black and I have a white cream or you can have just white. Um, I use basically scrap fabric for my nose and orange and for my scarf which was a red. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do to start is we're going to do a chain cast on. Okay, so here's your end lay over your finger twist away from you stick your finger up in with the index finger grab not that tail working yarn pull through create a slip stitch all right I'm going to do a chain cast on all 24 pegs all right so you wrap your loop back around the back side of it then you're going to pull through your working yarn and tighten okay the loop goes back behind the peg you pull the working yarn through and black's hard to see I do apologize but that's what you need you can do a different top hat if you want but it goes behind the peg Open the loop up, pull the working yarn through. Now, if you want to do another cast on, that's fine. You can do any cast on you want. It really doesn't matter. This is one that I just liked best for this particular garment. Okay. So, go ahead and do whatever cast on you see fit. Obviously, not a drawstring cast on because your foot's going through it, but you know. You can do an e wrap cast on, tighten it up later. Probably don't want to tighten it up because your foot's got to get through it. You can do a double wrap cast on. Um, you can do this chain cast on. It's entirely up to you. Okay. This is a guideline, but there is, you know, room to wiggle to your preference on this guideline. All right. Most of what you need is rows and peg count and gauge. You want, if you want this to fit like it should, you'll definitely need to work with fatter yarn. So, let's say you don't want to make this with Burnett Blanket. Let's say you'd like to make it with um, the Lions brand um, yarn that's real thick. You want to use a size 6. Alright. Alright, so we've done our cast on. Next. What we're going to do now is we're going to knit to purl to. Okay. Yeah, we're going to knit to purl to for eight rows. So, what that includes, let me move that away. Now, you're going to knit over one, two. You're going to purl two. One, two, and then you're going to knit two. Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and you should finish with purl two here at the end. 
and you're going to complete, complete that as one round. You're going to do eight total rounds of that. Okay. What you're doing is you're creating this section here. So you see your knit two and you see your purl two. All right. That's eight rows worth. So complete your eight rows. And then I'll show you how to do the brim. You're going to need 24 stitch markers for this brim area. You can use um, paper clips if you want. Okay. Paper clips will do fine for this. But you'll need uh, 24 of them. Okay. All right. So pause the video, get your eight rows of knit two, purl two done, and then we can start on the brim. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got our eight rows done. Okay. At this point, what you want to do is you want to take your stitch markers and you want to send them through each loop. Okay. And what this is going to do is going to allow you to easily see what loop you need to pull back. Okay. So you're going to do this with every single stitch. All right. You're going to put a stitch marker all the way around. Pause the video, get that much done, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay. So we've got them on every single stitch, as you can see. Okay, so next, what we want to do is we want to e-wrap. Okay, for five rows. All right. And when you e-wrap for five rows, what you're needing is this nice looser stitch to create a nice brim. If you knit for five rows, you'll, you won't create as big of a brim and it won't sit out as much as you need it to. So this is the reason why I'm doing e-wrap. Okay. So you want to do that all the way around and you want to do it for five rows. And then I'll show you what to do next. Creating the brim is actually really cool. All right. Sewing on separately or anything like that. Just go in and you e wrap. I'll show you a complete row with the stitch marker so that you kind of get an idea of what it looks like. These stitch markers are going to tell you what stitch you're going to bring back to create that brim. Okay. Almost there. Okay, that's what it looks like getting all the stitch marker stitches over. Now you just keep going. So go round and round for a total of five rows. Okay. What we're creating is this area here. Alright. So pause the video, e wrap for five rows, and we'll come back. Okay, we've done our five rows. Okay. Now what we want to do is put your working yarn out here so you don't get it intermingled. Um what you want to do now is you don't get yourself twisted up again. That looks like you're beginning right there. Okay, so find your tail, work your way down, and you're going to do what you're going to do is you're going to take and put stitch back on the peg. Okay. And you just go to whatever the next stitch marker is. Okay. That one's the next one. I'm just going to do this all the way around. And then you can take the stitch markers out. And then you can go in and 
knit the two together. But you're taking and putting these all back on. And what this is doing is creating a brim area. Which gives it the top hat look. Okay. And you take the stitch marker off. And you're going to knit the two stitches over. Okay. Take the stitch marker off. Knit the two stitches over. You're going to do this all the way around. And then you'll need to have your white or cream colored yarn ready. Okay, so you're going to do that all the way around. Make sure you have your yarn cream color ready because we'll have finished this section and be ready to work this section. The scarf is separate, so you know, so don't worry about that. But we'll be ready to do the next section. Okay. So pause the video, get that much done, and we'll come back and we'll start the next section. Okay, we have done that, and what you should have is this little bump. Okay. And then the top hat. Alright, now we need to change colors. So you're going to give yourself a little bit of tail. Like that. And get your black out of the way. You're done with it. The rest of the project until it, if you want to do the duplicate stitch to do your face and all that. All right, now you want to take your tail and then you want to take your new color and you want to do a single knot and then you're going to pull it to the base as tight as possible. Okay. Then you're going to wrap around and do a knot this way around the black and you're going to try to get that knot as close to the base as the other knot that you created. Then what you're going to do is pull it and the resistance between the two makes it to where it doesn't come unraveled. Now, and it also means you can cut it really short. If you are into knots, it's called a fisherman's knot, but in the needlecraft world, it's called a magic knot. Okay, but we've changed colors. Now, the next section we're wanting to do is this section here. Now, I have done a duplicate stitch of the face. Okay, but um, the only thing that you will need to work in is your nose here, and that's where you'll need your scrap orange to do your nose, and it's going to be similar to this, but you're working only on two pegs. I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy. It's not difficult, particularly if you got yourself two stitch markers, okay? All right, so what you want to do first you want to knit for six rows, okay? So 
You're just going to go in and you're going to knit all the pegs for six rows. Okay. So you can go round and round for six rows. And we will come back and I'll show you how to do the, the row with the nose in it. So I have my little guide there. All right. So go ahead and pause the video. Do six rows of cream or white. And we'll come back and I'll show you how to do the nose section. Okay. And you see we got our six rows done. You can see your top hat already showing up on the top. Okay. Now, what we want to do is create our little carrot nose. Now, what you want to do first is you want to knit your five. So here's one, two, three, four, five. All right. Now, you're not going to change color like you did with the black and the white. All you're going to do is you're going to tie your orange onto that white. Okay. Take it down to the base. And you're going to tie it again. Okay. Now, here's where you will need two stitch markers. Gonna place a stitch marker. See, this is the last one you did. You're gonna place a stitch marker on the next two stitches. Okay, this will tell you what to bring back up. All right, now you want to take and pick up your orange. And you want to knit for eight rows. So here is row one. And here is row two. Row three. Row four. Seven. And row eight. Eight rows. Pull that around. Now, you're going to find them stitch markers. And you're going to pull that first one up on the first peg. Put the second one up on the second peg. Take them off. You've now just created a nose. Because we've reconnected it, what we want to do is cut a similar length tail. Got to sharpen those. All right. And then you're just going to tie it off. Cut that a little short. Okay. So that is how you complete your nose. Now, you're going to pick back up on your white. And you're going to knit the two together. Which completes the nose. And you see there. Tug on it a little bit. There's your little nose. See? Alright. And then you just knit the rest of the row. And at this point you will... Knit for three more rows, and then we'll be ready to start on the heel.
Now what you want to do is you want to knit for three rows and then we'll be ready to do our heel. Okay, so pause the video and get that much done. Okay, as you can see, we've done our three rows. And you can see like a little head coming out the bottom. All right, so this part is entirely up to you if you've done socks or booties before. It's a short row heel, but whatever heel you want to do. All right, I'm going to do a double wedge. That is the easiest heel to do. A lot of people really like it. Know that your heel isn't going to be done on the front half of the loom, but the back half. Because you don't want your face of your snowman facing backwards. So you want it on the back half of the loom. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do this. You're going to knit all the way around, but you're going to stop just before this last peg. So you're going to knit 23 pegs. All right. it all the way around except for just that last one. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the working yarn, you're going to wrap it behind the peg and front. Okay. And then you're going to knit 10. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Okay, and then you're going to wrap behind the next peg and around in front. And then you're going to knit your way over to just before the last wrap and turn. Okay, now in it's typical to divide this half of the loom into thirds. 12 pegs divided by three, four. So you're going to have four wraps and turns. On this side, four single pegs, four single stitches, and then four wraps and turns. Okay. So you just keep this process going where you stop just before the last wrap and turn and you wrap and turn that next peg. So you stop just before the last wrap and turn so you can wrap and turn and continue. You're going to continue this where you have four single stitches in between your wraps and turns. You should have four wraps and turns on each side of those single stitches. Remember this process because once you're done with this process, you're going to knit your way around and you're going to repeat it again. Exactly like we just did. There's no real increase to it, which makes it really easy. Okay, And you don't tend to get holes. got it.
must wrap and turn. Okay. So four wraps and turns, four single stitches, four wraps and turns. All right. We've completed the first half of our heel. Now, I'm going to show you how to get started to do, to finish up this, to get started with the second half of the heel, but it works exactly the same. So what you want to do is you want to knit the two together to finish up the row, okay? Now, here's what you do. You're going to knit your way around, and you're going to stop just before that peg, and you're going to start over again. And then do it again. So you knit your way around. When you get to those wrapped and turn pegs, you're going to knit the two stitches together. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to knit your way over to just before the last peg. Just before the last peg, wrap and turn. This is where you start over. Okay. Easiest heel to do, and you don't get the holes. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just repeat what we just did again all over again okay so repeat it exactly the way I just did it knit your way over wrap and turn knit your way over wrap and turn down to four so four 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 then knit your way all the way around okay this completes your double wedge heel all right so go ahead and Pause the video and continue to repeat what we just did here, here, all right, and that completes your heel. So pause the video and get that much time. Okay, as you can see, four, four, four. All right, at this point, finish up the row. your way around instead of wrapping again you just finish the row okay and that gets you back to square one all right so at this point you just knit your way around get those last wrap and turn pegs back down to one stitch and then you're to the bulk of the foot and this is where it will vary now if you have a shorter foot you'll want to do like 20 rows, if you have my size foot, which is about average, you'll want to do 25 rows, and if you have a larger foot, then you'll want to do 30, but most of y'all are going to end up doing 25, so there's your wrap and turn pegs, just knit the two together, and then knit your way to the end. That gets you back to square one and that actually finishes up a double wedge heel. Remember this step because you'll be doing the exact same thing for the toe.
we won't be doing it on the same side. We'll be doing it on the opposite side of the ring because we're going to do a rip stitch close. And I've tried to make this as easy as possible. Using easy techniques. So there you have it. There's your heel. And here's your little face. All right. Now, what comes next is where you're either going to do 20 rows if you've got a particularly small foot. You're going to do 25 if you've got a regular foot that's anywhere from a 7.5 to, I would say, probably about a 9.5. And, and 25 rows for that. 30 rows if you get anything from a size 10 above. All right. So, we're just going to knit. Round and round. I would say for 25 rows, but it varies on your foot. So we have completed this much, and we are to this much. All right. So go ahead, pause the video, complete your 25 rows, and remember if you're a size 10 and above for women's, you'll want to do... Um, 30 rows if you're shorter from say a seven to a six and a half foot may fit a little big on you um, but you'll want to do 20 rows instead okay so pause the video get those many rows done and then we will come back and then I will show you how to set the toe up and we're almost done with the sock part okay so you can see we've done our 25 rows and now we're to the toe. Okay. So we're actually going to do the, do the toe on the same side as the face. So that our seaming is underneath. And um, it looks like a smooth toe. Okay. Now if you know how to do Kitchener bind off. Or you know how to do some other alternative method on your toe. Go for it. All right. Um, this is a guideline. Do whatever toe style you want. We're going to do a double wedge toe as well as what we did with the double wedge heel. You saw that it was really easy. So let's get started. We're going to knit over 11. So one, two, three, four. All right, it should go the same now as it did from the other side. So you knit your way up. And it's no different than what you did with your heel. You're just doing it at the toe and you're doing it at the front. Okay. So knit your way over 10. And then wrap and turn. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and get it wrapped and turn from here to here and here to here with four singles, just like we did on the heel. Okay. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to prep the new row to do the second half. Okay, so pause the video and get all your wraps and turns done. Okay, so here we got one, two, three, four wraps and turns, one, two, three, four singles, one, two, three, four wraps and turns. And we have ended on this side. We're going to knit our way around to the starting point and on those wraps and turn rows, between pegs, you're just going to toss both loops over. And just knit your way around. All 
Okay, now we should be about ready to start again, but we've got to get these first four back to, to a single stitch. So we knit two together for four. Okay, then you're going to, then you can count yourself, one, two, three, four, and you're going to go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Then you wrap and turn. And then you're going to do just what you did for the first half, for the second half. And then you'll knit your way around to the starting point when you're done with that. So instead of starting another section of toe, when you go and do your thing, oops, got to take that back on. All right, wrap and turn. Okay, so you're gonna do the same thing that you just did with the first half. Four wrap and turns, first four singles, four wraps and turns, and then you'll go ahead and knit your way to the starting point, and then I'll come back and show you how to finish up the toe with bind off and everything. Okay, so we're almost done with this. Pause the video and get that much done. Okay, <clears throat> I have gotten us back to our starting point. Just like we did with the first half of the toe. But instead of when you go to start knitting the two together on the front half and then you start the, the second half of the toe, at this point what you're going to do is you're going to knit the two together on those four stitches. And then you're just going to knit your way around. And that gets you back to all um, pegs have one stitch. And then you're going to want to bind off. Now, if you're used to a Kitchener bind off, go ahead and do that. But I'm just trying to keep things all nice and simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a regular bind off. And we're going to do a whip stitch close. And that's going to be one of the easier closures. And because it's going to be underneath, you're not going to feel it. Particularly with the way I sew it. Because I'm not going to sew both sections together. I'm just going to sew one half. And that way it doesn't have a lot of the bulk. If you want to both, sew both sections together, that's entirely up to, do, to you. If you want to try a mattress stitch, that's fine. But I find a mattress stitch in this kind of yarn is difficult. All right. So we're just going to do a whip stitch close. So you'll need a needle. And when you're done with your bind off, you're going to need a long tail in order to sew it up. Okay. So you can see. There's my seam nice and clean. All right. Now you can make this with um, what is it? Hometown USA Lines brand that's in a size 6. You can use that and it makes it really really easy to see your stitches. But with Burnout Blanket it's fluffy. Harder to see your stitches so um, you just kind of do the best you can there. All right so let's do a basic bind off. So you're going to knit the first two pegs. Take that second stitch, move it back across the bottom, lay it over. So this is just a regular bind off, nothing special, and move it over. Take the next stitch, move it back one, bottom loop over, and move it over one. Okay. Knit the next one. Move it back one, cross the bottom loop over, move it back one. So you're going to do that all the way around. So go ahead and bind off all your stitches and let's be ready to sew it up. Pause the video and get that much done. Okay, as you can see, there is your bind off. 
go ahead and get you a needle. All right, so here's what you want to do, and this is where it can get a little challenging. All right, so you see your light chaining here, where there's like a bottom half and a and a top half. You want to do the top half here and the bottom half here on your close-up. Okay. All right. So you want to go in the top half and the bottom half. All right. Top. Bottom. And go top. bottom. You can do both together. You can do the bottom and this can go this way. Um, it's fine. You can do that method. It'll work. Um, I do have a video specifically for whip stitch close. This is the easiest closure for a toe. This goes along with my concept of the easiest sock to make. Okay. Um, I do have a video on that. What is the easiest sock to make? And this is one of the techniques along with the double wedge heel, the double wedge toe. And um, it was done by a pole length of what people thought was the easiest thing to do and this was it so all right and when you stretch it out there it is okay nice little closure now what i like to do is go in turn it inside out and close it up now at this rate, this is where you start adding in a lot of your embellishments. And you make a little scarf and that kind of thing. Um, where's this at? And then this is where I'll do some of them. And then I go back right to where I came from. And you cut it and you're done. go. There's your bottom half. Alright. Now, you have you a whole booty here. Next thing you want to do is, you will probably find with this yarn, it's easier to do buttons. I did a duplicate stitch. And what a duplicate stitch is, is where you go in and you follow your, your columns and you find a single stitch and you duplicate it and you create it. You know, if you do buttons, you'll want to do small buttons and you'll want to do them kind of close to the mouth. And you'll need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you'll need nine buttons. Okay. And you may find it easier um, to do that than to do the duplicate stitch because this, this yarn is kind of hard to see. But, um, you might want to do buttons instead of a duplicate stitch, all right? So I'm going to show you what to do with the, um, scarf. 
really, really quick way of working up a scarf. Short end, grab it, index finger, push away from you, stick your thumb up in there, grab the working yarn, pull through. All right. Chain stitch on five. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, and I just toss that over on the five, fifth one. Okay, now um, to start, I'm just going to get my way back. And this is where it gets easy. So you're going to take and you're going to double wrap the next peg. One, two. Double wrap the next peg. One, two. One. Okay. One. Come back around one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. two. Once you do the two, that's where you kind of slip it to finish up your next dark row. You're going to slip that first stitch. You're going to wrap it, toss, 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 wrap, toss, wrap, toss, wrap, toss. Slip that, go to the next row. Wrap, toss, wrap. Gosh. And you're going to do this until you get your desired length, which if I was correct, it's going to be around a 12, 12, 14 inches. That's what you're going to need for your scarf. Okay. All right. As you can see, it's, it, it works up really fast. Okay. Works up really fast, and when you um, go ahead and tack it down, as you can see, I've tacked it down. I did a like a half knot, tacked it down here, and I tacked it down right where the face is, so that it doesn't move up onto your mouth. But I didn't tack it down anywhere else, and you don't want to make it too tight that you can't get your foot in there. Okay. Um, but you do it for like 12 inches, 12 to 14 inches, and then you do the bind off like I showed for the sock. You just do the regular bind off there, and um, then you just tie it around and tack it down. And you'll probably want to do it on the opposite side so that you um, have them kind of match like that. So. Set your stitches. Don't forget to set your stitches. That's an important thing. Just pull the stitches to set them. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. So let me pull that up. So all right. So if you got your tie on this side, make sure your tie is on the other side, on your other one. Um, if you want to know how to do the duplicate stitch, I will put a link below to duplicate stitch. Um, it's really useful, particularly if you want to do a more fancy motif on a garment. It's um, it probably be worth checking out. It's a little more challenging, but you'll definitely want to sew on your buttons and um, your mouth and tie everything around. But that is how you loom knit a snowman booty. And as you can find, it's really not that difficult. And you can do whatever scarf you want with five pegs. You can do a stitch pattern if you want. Um, the reason why I do that method is it's really fast. 
and um, it's not as much of a feature as the actual booty itself so it's up to you how you want to do that but um, you just keep doing that method you bind off just like you did for the soft part of it down here and you're you're done so just finish up your your fine touches wrap the scarf around tack it here tack it here so it doesn't go in now two eyes four spots for the mouth and then three spots down the front and you should have it and that is how you make a snowman booty